Okay, this is chapter 6, the Toltec Path to Freedom from the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Chapter 6, the Toltec Path to Freedom. The freedom we are looking for is in the freedom to be ourselves, to express ourselves. But if we look at our lives, we'll see most of the time we do things just to please others, just to be accepted by others, rather than living our lives to please ourselves. This is what happened to our freedom. Breaking old agreements. Everyone talks about freedom. All around the world, different people, different races, different countries are fighting for freedom. But what is freedom? In America, we speak of living in a free country. But are we really free? Are we free to be who we really are? The answer is no, we are not free. True freedom has to do with the human spirit and it is the freedom to be who we really are. Who stops us from being free? We blame the government, we blame the weather, we blame our parents, we blame religion, we blame God. But who is really stopping us from being free? We stop ourselves. What does it mean to be really free? Sometimes we get married and we say that we lose our freedom, then get divorced and we are still not free. What stops us? Why can't we be ourselves? We have memories of long ago when we used to be free and we loved being free, but we have forgotten what freedom really means. If we see a child who was two or three, perhaps four years old, we find a free human. Why is this human free? because this human does whatever he or she wants to do. The human is completely wild, just like a flower, a tree, or an animal that has not been domesticated. Wild. We observe humans who are two years old, we find that most of the time those humans have a big smile on their face and they're having fun. They are exploring the world. They are not afraid to play. They are afraid when they are hurt, when they are hungry, when some of their needs not met, but they're, they don't worry about the past. They don't care about the future, and they only live in the present moment. Very young children are not afraid to express what they feel. They are so loving that if they perceive love, they melt into love. They are not afraid to love at all. This is the description of a normal human being. As children, we are not afraid of the future or ashamed of the past. Our normal human tendency is to enjoy life, to play, to explore, to be happy, and to love. But what happens with the adult human? Why are we so different? Why are we not wild? From the point of view of the victim, we can say that something sad happened to us, and from the point of view of the warrior, we can say that what happened to us is normal. What has happened is that we have a book of law, the big judge and the victim who rules our lives. We are no longer free because the judge, the victim, and the belief system don't allow us to be who we really are. Once our minds have been programmed with all that garbage, we are no longer happy. This tra chain of training humans from human to human, from generation to generation, is perfectly normal in human society. You don't need to blame your parents for teaching you to be like them. What else could they teach you but what they knew? They did the best they could, and if they abused you, is due to their own domestications, their own fears, their own beliefs. They had no control over the programming they received, so they couldn't have behaved any differently. There is no need to blame your parents or anyone who abused you in your life, including yourself, but it's time to stop the abuse. It's time to free yourself of the tyranny of the judge by changing the foundation of your own agreements. It's time to be free from the role of the victim. The real you is still a little child who never grew up. Sometimes that little child comes out when you are playing or having fun, when you feel happy, when you're painting or writing poetry or playing the piano or just expressing yourself in some way. These are the happiest moments of your life, when the real you comes out, when you don't care about the past and you don't worry about the future. You are childlike, but there is something that changes all that. We call them responsibilities. The judge says, wait a second. You're responsible. You have things to do. You have to work. You have to go to school. You have to earn a living. All these responsibilities come to mind. Our face changes and becomes serious again. If you watch children when they are playing adults, you will see their little faces change. 
let's pretend I'm a lawyer. And right away their face changes. The adult face, ta face takes over. We co go to court and that's the face we see. That is what we are. We are still children, but we have lost our freedom. The freedom you're looking for is the freedom to be ourselves, to express ourselves. But if we look at our lives, we will see most of the time we were just doing things to please others. Just to be accepted by others rather than living our lives to please ourselves. This is what happened to our freedom. As we see in our society and all the societies around the world that for every thousand people, 999 are completely domesticated. The worst part is that most of us are not even aware that we are not free. There is something inside us that whispers to us that we are not free, but we do not understand what it is and why we are not free. The problem is that most people is that they live their lives and never discover the judge and the victim rule their mind, and therefore they don't have a chance to be free. The first step towards personal freedom is awareness. We need to be aware that we are not free in order to be free. We need to be aware of what the problem is in order to solve the problem. Awareness is always the first step because if you're not aware, there's nothing you can change. If you're not aware that your mind is full of wounds and emotional poison, you cannot begin to clean and heal the wounds and you will continue to suffer. There is no reason to suffer. With awareness, you can rebel and say, that is enough. You can look for a way to heal and transform your personal dream. The dream of the planet is just a dream. It's not even real. If you go into the dream and start challenging your beliefs, you will find that most of the beliefs that guided you into the wounded mind is not even true. You'll find that you suffered all those years of drama for nothing. Why? Because the belief system that was put inside your mind is based on lies. This is why it's important for you to master your own dream. This is why the Toltecs became dream masters. Your life is the manifestation of your dream. It is an art. And if you can change your life, and you can change your life anytime if you're not enjoying the dream. Dream masters create a masterpiece of life. They control the dream by making choices. Everything has consequences, and a dream master is aware of the consequences. To be Toltec is a way of life. It is a way of life where there are no leaders and no followers. Where you have your own truth, and you live your own truth. The Toltec becomes wise, becomes wild, and becomes free again. There are three masteries that lead people to become Toltecs. First is the mastery of awareness. That is to be aware of who we really are with all the possibilities. The second is the mastery of transformation, how to change, how to be free of domestication. The third is the mastery of intent. Intent from the Toltec point of view is that part of life that makes transformation of energy possible. It is the one living being, it is the one living being that seamlessly encompasses all energy or what we call God. Intent is life itself. It is unconditional love. The mastery of intent is therefore the mastery of love. When we talk about the Toltec path to freedom, we find that we have an entire map for breaking free of domestication. They compare the judge, the victim, and the belief system to a parasite that invades the human mind. From the Toltec point of view, all humans are domesticate, who are domesticated are sick. They are sick because there is a parasite that controls the mind and controls the brain. The food for the parasite is the negative emotions that come from fear. If we look at the description of a parasite, we find that it is a paras that a parasite is a living being who lives off of other living beings, sucking their energy without any useful contribution in return, and hurting their host little by little. The judge, the victim, and the belief system fit this description very well. Together they comprise a living being made of psychic or emotional energy, and that energy is alive. Of course, it's not material energy, but neither are emotions material energy. Our dreams are not material energy either, but we know they exist. One function of the brain is to transform material energy into emotional energy. Our brain is the factory of emotions. And, what we have said, the ma and we have said the main function of the brain is to dream. The Toltecs believe the parasite, the judge, the victim, and the belief system, 
has control of your mind. It controls your personal dream. The parasite dreams through your mind and lives its life through your body. It survives on the emotions that come from fear and thrives on drama and suffering. The freedom we seek to use our own mind and body to live our life instead of the life of the belief system, when we discover that the mind is controlled by the judge and the victim and the real us is in the corner, we have two choices. One is to keep living the way we are, to surrender to the judge and the victim, to keep living in the dream of the planet. The second cho choice is to do what we did as children when parents tried to domesticate us. We can rebel and say no. We declare war against the parasite, a war against the judge and the victim, a war for our independence, a war for the right to use our own mind and our own brain. This is why in all the shamanic traditions in America, from Canada to Argentina, people call themselves warriors because they are in a war against the parasite of the mind. This is the real meaning of a warrior. The warrior is one who rebels against the invasion of the parasite. The warrior rebels and declares a war. But to be a warrior doesn't mean we always win the war. We may win or we may lose, but we always do our best. At least we have a chance to be free again. Choosing this path gives us, at the very least, the dignity of rebellion and ensures that we will not be the helpless victim of our own whimsical emotions or poisonous emotions of others. Even if we succumb to the enemy, the parasite, we will not be among those victims who would not fight back. At best, being a warrior gives us an opportunity to trans transcend the dream of the planet and to change our personal dream to a dream that we call heaven. Just like hell, heaven is a place that exists within our own mind. It's a place of joy, a place where we are happy, we are free to love and to be who we really are. We can reach heaven while we're alive. We don't have to wait until we die. God is always present and the kingdom of heaven is everywhere. But first we have to, we need to have the eyes and ears to see and hear the truth. We need to be free of the parasite. The parasite can be compared to a monster with a thousand heads. Each head of the parasite is one of the fears we have. We want to be free, we have to destroy the parasite. One solution is to attack the parasite head by head, which means we face each one of our fears one by one. This is a slow process, but it works. Every time we face one of the fears, we are a little more free. The second approach is to stop feeding the parasite. We don't give the parasite any food. We kill the parasite by starvation. To do this, we have to gain control of our emotions. We have to refrain from fueling the emotions that come from fear. This is easy to say, but it's very difficult to do. It's difficult because the judge and the victim controls our mind. A third solution is called the initiation of the dead. The initiation of the dead is found in many traditions and esoteric schools around the world. We find it in Egypt, India, India, Greece, and America. This is a symbolic death which kills the parasite without harming our physical body. When we die symbolically, the parasite has to die. This is faster than the first two solutions, but it's even more difficult. We need a great deal of courage to face the angel of death. We need to be very strong. Let's take a look, closer look at each of these solutions. So that's part one of chapter six. We'll get into the art of transformation and the other ones in the next one.